Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. This is the gold Dow ratio provided by netdania.com. You can click on the link below. You can see we're on the weekly chart here. Now I've drawn a number of lines and I want to explain to you what these mean. The first divergence, we're looking at divergences between paper gold and paper stocks. Now the first divergence that we have here began with the collapse of the NASDAQ. We have the Dow here, so the collapse is not as dramatic. Nevertheless, it's a decent collapse in the stock market. We had uh, gold beginning to rally at the end of the Clinton administration. And uh, at the same time, uh, stocks were moving sideways until gold corrected and stocks continued higher. That's the first divergence where we have stocks moving higher and gold moving lower. The next one that is much more dramatic is the one that we got during the beginning of the financial crisis. You can see here at this point in 2008 stocks begin to rally whereas gold began to sell off and then the resolution came when stocks topped and then collapsed. Gold then began its uh, rise a very large rise to where we are near today now what we're looking at at the present time is a massive divergence you can see I've marked the top in the gold at about 1780 down to where we now are uh, 1400 or so whereas stocks rallied from about 12,500 to over 15,000 so this divergence between paper gold and paper stocks is the largest that we've had. I'll show you the size of it. You can see this line here between here and here. That's the size of the rally that we had in stocks whereas this line here to this line here is the size. Actually that line is wrong. Uh, we'll delete that line. Uh, this this line here is the bottom of the gold move. So the size of the divergence that we're now looking at in stocks is nearly twice the size with gold. We're talking about if we drew it from here, then it would be much, much larger. But if we just draw it from here and uh, get the similar thing, then we're talking about a little bit larger so what does that say? Well, we're either going to go into a collapse like we saw in 2008 where eventually stocks gave way and followed gold down, or we're going to go into a crack up boom situation where both gold and, and stocks rise dramatically from here. Either one is a possibility, but history has shown us that uh, eventually these two assets will uh, come back together in price so the gold and gold paper and stock paper manipulators uh, in my opinion they're on their last legs there's going to be a dramatic uh, resolution of this situation now we know that the manipulators they have lies uh, they have theft and ultimately they have uh, death uh, and uh, those are their three bags of tricks hopefully we don't end, end up with the third uh, with some type of world war and uh, them trying to cover their tracks with uh, a, a complete global conflagration to cover up what they're doing but uh, we'll see here when we look at the two articles that I've covered today uh, Jeff Nielsen and the Got Gold report uh, that this entire thing is a fraud. There really is no economic basis for what they're doing. But before we go to that, I want to show you just one simple chart. This is from Zero Hedge. This is a overlay of U.S. macro data. This only goes back to June of 2011. But this is an overlay of U.S. macro data with the S&P 500. Now you can see this incredible divergence that we have here where stocks are zooming to the sky. It's not quite parabolic in this chart. If we turn at this point 
and go straight up in the S&P 500, then that definitely is a parabolic rise, which we know always results in a crash. And then we have this macro data, which is just falling dramatically. So the underlying economy is not responding. Of course, the entire premise behind the Federal Reserve's theory of suppressing interest rates down to zero to cause unemployment to decrease and uh, the economy to recover. We know that's a complete lie. Uh, the uh, truth is shown by what's going on in Japan, who has had since their top in 1990, we're now talking about three plus decades of lost economy. So the Keynesian central bankers, central planners, of course, they have nothing but lies in their bag of tricks. And ultimately, they may destroy the entire world economy trying to uh, cover up the repercussions of what they do. So let's look at this Jeff Nielsen article. Uh, fascinating, excellent uh, article. Everything that Jeff Nielsen does is wonderful. Uh, Jeff Nielsen is a true investigative reporter. Uh, not the kind of thing that we have today. Uh, we have the breaking scandals. Uh, we have the uh, triple whammy going on with Obama, and uh, it seems that the press has turned against him. It seems that his protectors have turned against him. Are they going to make him the next Nixon? Uh, I don't know. My, my gut instinct is that they're going to sweep this all under the rug, and uh, he will survive this thing. But it's quite possible that he could be brought down the way they brought down Nixon. But let's look at this world paper council this is a, a, a look right into the heart of the gold rigging uh, again by Jeff Nielsen once upon a time an entity called the world gold council was created it was supposed to be an industry trade group which like all industry trade groups promotes the health and growth of their industry but that's not how it turned out to understand the world gold council one needs to do little more than examine its history it was created in 1987 was this the beginning of some new golden age for the gold mining industry hardly in fact it marked the early stages of the most successful era of gold price suppression in history and the complete destruction of the global gold mining industry with more than 90 percent of the world's gold mines being bankrupted now remember Alan Greenspan's famous statement that the central banks stand, stand ready to lease gold in ever-increasing amounts should the price rise. 1987 was also the year of the stock market crash, and that was the beginning of the Greenspan era. That's when Greenspan took over with the Fed. If the World Gold Council is really an industry trade group, then it was, is the most incompetent, inefficient such entity ever created. But of course, the World Gold Council doesn't serve gold or even gold mining. It serves paper, banker paper, to be precise. Like all supposed industry trade groups, the World Gold Council is officially comprised of a collection of the world's largest gold miners who themselves are nothing but a herd of banker sycophants lest anyone suffer from the delusion that the world's gold miners and the WGC were merely innocent bystanders in the destruction of the global gold mining industry, more facts are in order. At around the time the WGC was formed, these same large gold miners were in the process of enslaving themselves to the bankers by forward selling hundreds of tons of gold which hadn't even been dug out of the ground yet in order to further depress prices in the sector by creating a glut of supply. This policy of self-destruction became institutionalized as quickly as the sycophant miners identified new reserves in the ground. They would forward sell that ore to the bankers, permanently discounting their own commodity. Those readers who don't fully comprehend this intentional suicide spiral need to be reminded of another industry trade group which we are all familiar with, OPEC. When OPEC was created, did it immediately result in a long-term depression in the price of oil? 
did it result in 90% of the world's oil companies being bankrupted? Did OPEC members forward sell their massive oil supplies in quantities? No, precisely the opposite in every respect. OPEC didn't forward sell their oil to depress the price. They restricted supply to maximize total revenues for their industry. Their industry did not go into long-term depression where more than 90% of all companies were bankrupted. Instead, this industry trade group is directly responsible for the robust health and profits of the world's oil companies. But don't take my word for it. Feel free to check with Rex Tillerson, CEO of Exxon. The $400 billion market cap for Exxon is larger than the combined market caps for the entire global gold mining industry. Indeed, Mr. Tillerson's personal annual compensation is larger than the individual market caps of most of the world's gold mining companies. Clearly, the World Gold Council is nothing but a slave collective in bondage to the bankers and which serves not the interests of gold or gold mining but rather the promotion of the bankers paper monetary system need more convincing simply look at their website try finding information about gold ie supply demand data what one will discover is that such data goes back no more than two years this is despite the fact that gold mining is one of humanity's oldest industries where we have been mining refining gold for nearly 5,000 years Conversely, there are a plethora of essays going back more than 15 years letting us know about all the ways in which the bankers want to use our gold to make their paper system better. The World Paper Council is in reality nothing but a banking industry sub trade group composed of some of the bankers most loyal servants paying homage to their masters more proof that the WGC serves the paper rather than gold came out today with its utterly astonishing reporting on Q1 for the gold market. Knowledgeable readers already know that we are in the process of the most massive liquidation of paper gold products. Those readers also know that much most paper gold is in fact just paper. This is something which commentators such as myself have long suspected. However, it is something to which the bankers and mainstream media have now implicitly confessed. This occurred in response to the current massive gold supply deficit to the gigantic Indian market. A series of articles came out in the mainstream media where bankers proposed solving this gold supply deficit by selling Indians more paper gold. In other words, they were going to increase the supply of gold by selling paper gold. Obviously, the only possible way in which selling paper gold can increase the total supply of gold is if the bankers are simply selling paper and calling it gold. Given that bankers have a track record of selling paper and calling it gold, which literally traces back to the money changers of a thousand years ago, this is hardly a revelation. As regular readers know, we're currently seeing the most radical increase in gold demand in modern history of our gold markets. This is evidenced by a chart already seen previously. Thus, with the simultaneous occurrence of a massive liquidation of paper called gold and a massive surge in demand for real gold, this was the headline from the WGC's Q1 analysis reported another one of Banker's most loyal friends, Kitco Metals. WGC first quarter global gold demand contracts due to ETF outflows, jewelry rises. This headline was immediately followed by more of Kitco's trademark gold bashing, quote, large outflows from gold exchange traded funds led to a 13% year on year decline in global gold demand during the first quarter of uh, to 963 metric tons, the World Gold Council said Thursday. If one actually goes to the WGC website and reads through the report, it is presented in an almost opposite manner to Kitco's bias 
but understand this is a tag team operation. Perhaps only 1% of the gold investors who see Kitco's WGC headline and supposed sum summarization will ever actually go and read the original report. The WGC produces the intentionally misleading data and then spin doctors of Kitco present it. The report of a 13% decline in Q1 gold demand may have been conveniently buried within the WGC's own report, but it is obviously the headline number in a quarter where all the facts trumpeted a massive surge in gold demand. The WGC reported a mythical 13% decline in year-over-year -year demand. Total jewelry demand up 12%. Jewelry demand in China up 19%. Total demand in India up 27%. Total demand in China up 20%. U.S. demand up 6% for the first time since 2005. Demand for gold bars, coins in China up 22%. Demand for gold bars and coins in India up 52%. Demand for gold bars, coins in the US up 43%. Global demand for official coins up 18%. Demand for gold by central banks exceeds 100 tons for the seventh consecutive Quarter. Meanwhile, on the supply side, mine supply rose by only 4%, while scrap sales, which account for over one-third of total supply, fell by 4%, meaning total supply only rose by 1%. Obviously, in a market which currently features scorching demand for real gold, a 1% increase in supply creates a totally unsustainable supply demand paradigm which can only be put back into balance via massive increase in price. This is reflected by the recent fanaticism which the bankers have displayed in trying to sell more of their paper gold, paper called gold, at the same time that the smart money is ridding itself of this paper at the fastest rate in history. It's also reflected in the shameless dishonesty of the mainstream media. In the midst of one of the strongest surges in demand in this entire 13-year bull market, we have the propaganda machine perversely referring to the gold market as a bear market. This is despite the fact that all available data indicates not only a massive increase in demand for real gold, but also a massive increase in premiums to purchase actual gold. It is not the price or demand for gold which has recently plummeted. It is the price slash demand for paper called gold which has plummeted. A World Gold Council could not make such a mistake. A World Paper Council would be expected to make that mistake. So, excellent article. Clearly shows you that uh, as I've said many many times that the Silver Institute, the World Gold Council, the World Gold Miners, the World Silver Miners, these are all captured institutions by the suppressors, by the paper banksters. These are captured institutions and we'll see this now when we move over to this Got Gold report. So this is kind of a breakdown of the latest gold smash and of course the same thing in uh, spades for silver and uh, this is going to break down and show you how this was done and how it's very suspicious that the CME and the CFTC did not uh, get any red flags with this uh, smackdown. Houston, we're using this space to put something in the public domain out of convenience more than anything. Where were the regulators on gold futures position limits April 12th and April 16th? Flashback to Friday, April 12th, when the paper gold futures market was slammed with an enormous sell order in the early going of New York trading following a tenderizing of the market right at the New York Open. We have read and heard various descriptions of the initial sell order being as little as 124 tons and as much as 400 tons of gold equivalent sold by a single source or by a group all at once. Now keep that in mind here. It was either a single source which is illegal or it was a group together all at the same time 
which is illegal with the express intent to break the gold market. We want to voice a concern of ours which we thought of that very day and have thought about off and on since then but have yet to act on it other than to share it with several colleagues. Our simple question, where are the regulators, in this case the CFTC and the CME group, with regard to size and accountability limits? First, though, a caveat, we do not have the actual trade data, which would include the actual orders and sellers of those orders. Without that, this is pure speculation and subject to receiving that actual data. That said, we do know is that the volume spiked to an unprecedented level April 12th and Monday, April 15th, and that initial sale triggered an avalanche of trading and trailing stops. The net effect was that the initial order was indeed large enough and sold into the market fast enough that it literally overwhelmed the gold futures market. Whoever it was used a bazooka at a knife fight. The selling panic that ensued will be talked about for generations. Whether the initial sale into the gold market was 124 tons or 400 tons is not really material to our question. Either size would be so much higher than any one trader should have been able to sell into the gold market at one time that it begs the question, how many traders would have had to be involved in order to legally sell that many gold futures contracts into the market. Let's assume for this discussion that the initial sale was 124 tons. That's about 4 million ounces or the equivalent of 40,000 COMEX contracts. From earlier work we know that the CME group has position limits for gold futures of 3,000 contracts in the front month and 6,000 contracts in all months. We know from the open interest that the initial sale on April 12th was concentrated in the front month, so no one trader should have been able to sell more than 3,000 contracts at one time. And that's assuming that the trader had a zero open position when the sale occurred. The 3,000 number is supposed to be the limit of all contracts and options, both long and short, at any one time, even intraday. Assuming all traders involved had no open contracts before opening 4 million ounces worth, how many traders would have had to be involved? Simple math says 40,000 contracts divided by 3,000 lot limit equals 13.3 traders. Call it 14 traders. So in order for the initial 124 ton sale to have occurred legally, it would have had to have been 14 traders, all with zero open orders, acting simultaneously, all acting independently in their own self-interest without colluding with each other to sell for effect or conspiring to foment a price smash. And it goes on. So you can see there that he's pretty much proven it doesn't matter whether it was one trader that did that selling because that is clearly illegal and it doesn't matter if it was a group of traders because the fact they all did it at the same time would be proof that they were colluding so we have a gold market that is clearly being manipulated the ma manipulation actually goes all the way to the miners uh, as i pointed out before uh, gold mining stocks silver mining stocks it's playing into a rigged game because almost all of the players in gold and silver that includes the miners the exchanges the councils the reporters of the statistics uh, possibly uh, the bullion sellers the bullion banks all of these players are compromised they're compromised and involved in the largest scam that has ever been run in the history of the world that is the central banker suppression of the price of gold and silver the reason they're doing this is because their model of central planning in the west is collapsing and the gold and silver prices are indications of that collapse and uh, they will ultimately lose in this game and we'll talk to you next time